first on Monday, June 5th, 2023. Uh, number two is approval of minutes of May 1st, 2020 Board of Public Works meeting. Motion by Stauber, second by Mike. All those in favor, say any, any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. All the same sign. Motion. <clears throat> citizens' comments. Do we have any citizens? Oh, um, I'm sorry, sir. Are you a citizen? <laughs> Good evening. Evening. Discuss. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Okay. I'm here to discuss what is apparently item number five on your agenda, and I want to talk favorably of that particular item. Uh, I've given everybody a handout here, and it's got four pages, so I'll just really briefly go through a few things here. Uh, the first item is a Google shot, uh, Google home, uh, whatever they call it, Google Earth shot here of the property. Uh, what I'm speaking sp specifically about is the approximately 70 feet marked in red there on the would be east side of South Radis. Uh, I also have some information about uh, state code for parking. So uh, as you can see from that, there's a, about 70 feet. And if you turn to the next page, top picture shows the two no parking signs that signify that 70 feet, which if I'm correct, uh, I believe the average, just the average length of a parallel parking space is 23 feet, which means I could fit three, potentially three uh, parking spaces in that section if that was not a no parking section. Across the street, which is the second picture there, is a fire hydrant, which, going back to the first page, uh, is identified 20 feet by state statute as no parking because of the fire hydrant. Back to the second page, the, uh, the third picture there does show a single space in front of that no parking zone there. That is a legal parking space. It is four feet from a driveway, which, according to state statute sub number four there, so 346.53, sub four, within four feet of an entrance to an alley or private driveway or sorry, private road or driveway. Um, that is a legal spot, but again, it's only one spot. The top of the next page does show uh, additional parking down the road a little ways. Um, again, if I go back to that second page with the fire hydrant, the space between the fire hydrant, no parking zone, and that driveway is not ample space for a parking space. So there's limited parking. Um, there is a concern, of course, of, of the vehicles that are docked. So on that third page, second picture, you can see a truck docked and unloading at this point, or loading, I don't know what they're doing. But they're clearly blocking the sidewalk. And then the third picture there shows a pedestrian who's actually walking on the street because that sidewalk is currently blocked. Also in that third picture, you'll notice another semi in the background. It's not that there's a period of truck there and then gone for a while. They actually stack up trucks, and there's oftentimes multiple trucks that block that for a while. So um, that's a whole nother topic. Uh, I just wanted to show that that was uh, the situation on that situa on that side. Uh, the fourth page there does show um, some signs that Dairy Queen has put up. Uh, they're concerned with parking that's happening in their lot as people park and walk over to my property or my business. Um, I've had customers, though, concerned about how the Dairy Queen can block street parking as being reserved parking because of the station, the location of those signs right next to the street there. As you can see from the top picture, it's right on the road. As you can see from the second picture, it does not say parking lot, it says reserved parking, and those violators will be towed. So I have customers who are currently looking at that sign saying, I can't park on the street now either because they have it reserved. I asked Dairy Queen and they said the city gave them permission to put those signs there, and so I don't know who would have given that permission. But parking is very definitely a concern. Um, again, going to that very first page, you can see by the nature of the shape of my parking lot, I am limited on how many spaces I can uh, provide for my customers. I have all of my staff parking on the street. Again, if you're looking south of the approximately 70 feet red marking there, there's two cars parked, those would be my employees. So they do park a fair distance from the property and further down as more, more staff come into work. So again, I'm, I'm talking in, in favor of changing the approximately 70 feet of currently no parking to being identified as no parking only during the time of day when that company across the street is receiving trucks and allowing to have customer parking in the evenings and in the weekends, which of course are my busiest times of business. That's all I have. Thank you.
construction update. <clears throat> construction update presented by Chris Pauly. Good evening, everybody. It's been about a month since we last met, so I got a pretty lengthy uh, construction update for you guys. Uh, asphalt maintenance crack filling is completed. Uh, we'll follow up uh, with that with our uh, asphalt maintenance, and that is scheduled for the end of June. Uh, asphalt mill in place projects. Fifth to Anton, or fifth Anton to Lemley, and Lemley fifth to twenty first got paved on Friday. That's uh, so all we'll have to do is put the shoulders on. But we do have a, a Hume, a fifth from Hume to fourth to do yet, or yeah, fifth from Hume to fourth to do yet, or Anton. And and once we complete that whole project in that area, we'll go back and shoulder uh, once the weather cools, cools down a little bit too, so we don't wreck the asphalt that's there. Uh, Northridge was another mill in place project that got completed also. And that Northridge is up by B&H Central to Hamas. Uh, the, the really nice one I provided pictures for you uh, was the much needed repair underneath the viaduct. That is all completed now. Uh, road base reconstruction, uh, Palmetto, Daggy to Becker. Uh, that is the North South Street, just south of the high school. Uh, that is scheduled. The water department is going to replace the water main in that area. They are scheduled to start next week, uh, the week of June 12th. Uh, Cherry first to second. That was a holdover from last year. Uh, sanitary and water main was completed along with all the laterals. Concrete repairs are completed. Asphalt paving is scheduled for the week of June 19th. Eighth, Falcon of Peach. They had the whole crew up there today. Sanitary sewer crew was replacing some laterals up in that area. We have a sanitary sewer main extension on the eastern part of that project. And the concrete crew is up in that area getting it ready for the overlay between Palmetto and Felker. Uh, another pictures in your packet tonight is the EV charging stations are now all completed uh, with uh, painted stalls and the signage is up. Uh, miscellaneous work, uh, since we last met, we pretty much finished up all our miscellaneous work. Snowplow damage and, and terraces completed. Terrace tree removal restoration completed. Uh, many failing catch basins throughout the uh, throughout the city. Storm, uh, storm damage washouts pretty much from the last time it rained here. I think that was on May 6th. On a Saturday, we had some uh, pretty good rain. It flooded out peach and ives, and we had some washouts. We took care of all that. Uh, ditching complaints, plug drain tile, touch up work on last year's projects and pothole patching uh, has been kind of our realm that we've been in to uh, before we started uh, with all the projects. Um, another update, uh, it's the June 5th today, No Mo May I think was a, a success with about 250 residents signing up. Uh, just a reminder that we will now be starting to enforce the weed ordinance. And so please get your lawns cleaned up or risk uh, receiving a citation for vi violating the ordinance. Um, uh, in your packet tonight also, it's a little early, but uh, we received several calls a year in regards to the uh, clean sweep. Uh, this year, the event will be on Saturday, September 19th from eight to 12 at the Saratoga Town Hall. Uh, Wood County alternates the location every year, so in 2024, it will be back in Marshfield. This information will be out on all our platforms, such as the city website, Facebook, Instagram, and so forth. And Tom Locks has been informed of this, and he'll he'll be pushing all the information out also. Uh, finally, I just, well, not quite finally, because I have another update for you, but finally we wrapped up another Dairy Fest weekend. <laughs> Each year we hold a couple of meetings to prepare uh, prior to the event. Uh, and I just want to give a shout out to the street division staff, uh, police and fire departments, park and rec, and Mackey uh, for the awesome cooperation to make that weekend a very successful and an enjoyable event. So it went by, it went smoothly as, as it has in the past, but it wouldn't go that smoothly unless we had the cooperation of everybody involved. So my last thing, I just got this at late this afternoon. I was just informed that uh, waste management will be doing some brush chipping. And after, after that is completed, they have secured a contractor to come in and do some uh, site improvements this Thursday and Friday and possibly Monday. The site will be closed during that time, and, but, we, but will be available for the weekend. And I informed Tom Lux, our uh, communication director, to get that out as quickly as possible out on all our platforms also. Uh, with that, I am complete.
Any questions? Russ? Um, I would echo the compliments on the viaduct uh, work. That was very nice. I drove it myself and it's very smooth. Uh, question for you, does the city have a proactive plan to remediate terraces that have been damaged during snow bank removal? Yeah, yes, we do. Uh, we have uh, people call in and we have a program now that will go out and take pictures okay. and it'll be sitting in that program until um, until we actually go out and fix it and then we can re remove it as a as a uh, occurrence, I would say. Okay, so it's kind of on a, on a as needed basis or reactive basis? Yep. Okay. okay. That's it. Hey Chris, um, do you know what they're planning to do at the waste yard drop off waste site? I've just been hearing lots of people complaining about it. So. Yeah, I, th I think I in my last email, I kind of addressed all those concerns that we've been hearing from the citizens too. And I th they want to get all the brush and branches removed and they want to basically do some site improvements where they can utilize it a lot better, whether that's calling in some more base and and uh, what had happened is they got uh, some pretty big holes out there and whenever it rains, it gets pretty bad. So I think they wanna come in and get that smoothed out, get the water draining the right way and, and so forth, so. Any other questions? Here. Uh, no question, just a note of <clears throat> thanks. Uh, again, to echo Russ's comments as well, the paving uh, down by the viaduct is fantastic, uh, but also I recently sent you a citizen comment and uh, that was addressed and they were extremely happy and, and appreciative and sent over a nice email stating that. So I just wanted to pass that along to you and thank you for attending to the citizen needs. Thank you. Um, Mike, I've got one other thing. Yes. And, and maybe I should have brought this up during citizens comments, but uh, Chris, you could probably take a swing at this or, or Josh, but I did receive a call from a uh, resident uh, neighboring the fairgrounds and they've been there for well over 30 years. And um, uh, the complaint was specific about the dust that is generated from the uh, parking area and the drive-through uh, or the driveway. I'll go, I guess I'll call it a road because it's no longer blocked. People can drive right through the fairgrounds. And uh, they're concerned with the har harmful air particulates that the dust is creating. They can't use their back patio because everything is covered in dust and their vehicles are covered in dust and they can't hang out their laundry to dry, for example. So it's really an inconvenience and uh, a, a concern, a health concern for the residents. And um, I know back in our Cherokee days, you know, we used to say, well, the fairgrounds was here long before you moved in and you kind of knew what you were getting, but I always look at it as kind of a two-way street, um, no pun intended, but, you know, the neighbors of the, of the fairgrounds are very accommodating during the fair and the other events. And I just wonder why, you know, this is the only gravel area in the city limits, I think, besides alleys that uh, isn't wetted or isn't you know treated to, to uh, address the dust concern. I can address that one, Josh. Um, uh, Dale did contact me we're, we, each year before the uh, Dairy Fest breakfast. We go out there and grade that parking lot and roll it back down. And specifically, he asked me when we would have it done and so he could apply the uh, chemicals to knock the dust down. Now, whether he got out there to do that yet or not, I, I don't know. Yeah, so this resident said the, the area was graded, and then two weeks later, I think in preparation for Dairy Fest, it was regraded. Um, and they said they had been in communication with the, uh, the fair uh, manager yeah. who said he didn't want to invest the money in the chemical that was needed to suppress the dust or something to that effect. Oh, that's getting the second hand, but yeah, because he wanted to know when we were done so he could call the company in to okay. uh, do the application. So I could follow up with Dale to see if that got done or not. Yeah. So, yeah. Are we equipped to do that if, if necessary? Or is that always hired out? That's hired out. We don't carry that chemical. So what's the response time when we have to do that in, say, just to, you know, appease neighbors? Lead time, you know, once we make a phone call, you know? It, it, yeah, that's it's, fairgrounds is them, so I'd have to okay. ask Dale for that one, yeah. Josh, you have any idea on Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Seeing none, move on to number five, review of parking restrictions on 1616 South Radis Avenue presented by John Marowitz, our city engineer. Hi. Um, so our office received a request to review parking <coughs> restrictions on South Radis I'm near 1616 South Radis. That's 
Um, Mr. Witzel had a pretty good uh, overview of that. It's by Superior Paper Products and Hub City Ice Cream. So they requested a change to the parking restrictions to allow better access for trucks utilizing their loading docks. Um, there currently are no, there are no parking restrictions listed in the administrative code. However, there are signs and pavement marking out there indicating parking is prohibited on the east side of South Radis um, in the area that uh, Mr. Witzel identified. Um, I did talk with Superior Paper Products, so they requested that um, they could they could get by with the no parking zone limited to certain hours. Their hours of operation or when they get deliveries are generally Monday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. So I felt we could open this whole section up um, outside of those hours and remove any parking restrictions at all outside of those times. Um, so it would open up um, four additional parking spots um, outside of Superior Papers operating hours. So my recommendation is to um, amend the parking restrictions to be parking prohibited 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday on the east side of Radis Avenue from a point 515 feet north of the north line of 17th Street to a point 660 feet north of the north line of 17th Street. And also to um, update the administrative code of traffic and parking regulations. Mike? I'll make a motion to approve that. A motion to a second. Second. Any discussion? Also? So looking at the document Mr. Witzel provided and the document you have in the packet, it looks like um, the one Mr. Witzel provided allows for an additional parking space on East Rodis. So there is room for one vehicle, as Mr. Witzel pointed out, right next to Hub City Ice Cream driveway. Um, that was a source of or an issue that Superior Papers was having with a vehicle parked there. It made it um, inconvenient, maybe is the wrong word, but it, it was part of their request to um, sign that whole area, no parking, but they were agreeable to do it during their business hours. And, and as long as it was mentioned during the, the citizens comments, uh, what, what have we to say about the signs across the neighboring business that are in the terrace facing east? Do you know if those were authorized by the city and I'm not aware of that at all. Okay. Um, I want um. Uh, those have not been offer, authorized by the city, nor would they be authorized by the city. Uh, we'll take a look at that since that information was provided this morning, and we'll take and address that in a future meeting or uh, address it internally. And why why wouldn't they be authorized? Because it's signage in a terrace? Is that the reason? Uh, we don't uh, um, designate on-street parking for uh, private companies on city right-of-way. We don't uh, um, basically assign spaces for any um, private parking on city right-of-way. I, I think the location of the signs is what's causing the confusion. They're a little too close to the street, and it looks like they're prohibiting on-street parking, but they're, the way I read, interpret it, they're... they're um, notifying people that the, the parking lot is reserved for those customers. I'm just, I think the location to the city, Again, the curve is a little confusing. Okay. Again, I did, couldn't see the pictures in my uh, information, but it's something we'll have to take a look at when I get back. Okay. Anything else? It's your pleasure, gentlemen. Do we have a motion a second? No, this again. Yeah. No questions. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Do you recommend items for future agendas? 
during that. Uh, same yeah, maybe, maybe if necessary, we could discuss the fairgrounds parking and and roadway just so we kind of kind of formalize it and come to some kind of consensus. Um, either the roadway is closed or it's going to be you know the pave, the surface is going to be treated. Um, maybe just an update once the staff has had time to coordinate with the commission or whoever they need to. Thank you. Anything else? We're saying that we'll vote for adjournment. Motion and second. All those in favor, we are adjourned. <laughs>